Historic preservation connects us to those who came before us. And I'm very fascinated by that. Um, the idea that you can occupy the same space that important people in the past have also occupied or bump up against um, the same walls, the same handrails, walk the same steps, that you can see the grooves in the um, in the cast in the stone where the steps are like at the state capitol building those steps are mold you know shaped from all the feet that have gone up and down those steps in the past that's very moving and actually if you go to to europe you go to um you know rome and visit the acropolis you experience the same thing and to think that those are the same steps that you know christ would have walked is just it's very moving for me. So, of course, in preservation circles, there's a lot of lamenting of the um, great buildings that are no longer existing. And, you know, back in the 60s, the whole Historic Preservation Act is a result of urban renewal and the loss of community because of, you know, major highway projects or, um, you know, the idea that the downtowns were falling apart and we needed to rebuild them, so we just scratched them and started over. Um, it, we lost a lot of great architecture from there, and we've lost that connection to those generations that made Oklahoma what it was when they first came here for the land run. Oklahoma um, is, is a rather young state in comparison to many of our neighbors on the east and the west. And, um, you know, we still get, you know, comments from people about, well, you know, there's nothing historic here. We're too young to be historic. But actually, we're not. And I hear it less now that Oklahoma has turned 100 years old. Um, but we're, we're not that young of a state, and we have some very important architecture here. The architecture, mid-century architecture, is something that's just really caught fire with the younger generations, and so just as crazy as, you know, our parents or grandparents might have been in saving the buildings from the 1900s or the 1920s, we have a new generation that um, actually they're even getting excited about architecture from the 1970s. So, um, you know, time marches on and what wasn't historic a couple dec decades ago now meets the definition of being historic. And that's what it's all about, is continuing to connect those beads of time through architecture. So some people think that there are, we've run out of buildings in Oklahoma, that there aren't any great ones to redo. But there actually are. There's. Um, there's always one great building in each community. Um, we recently participated in a project in Gaiman. It was the 1950s, um, 1950 exactly, um, Dale Hotel, four-story hotel. Um, it, very important to the community when it was originally constructed, and a lot of hotels in Oklahoma are like this. When it was originally constructed, it was constructed because a group of uh, community leaders came together and decided that they needed a good hotel for um, traveling salesmen and other business people to stay in when they came through their town. Um, so it was seen as a revenue maker for their town. And a lot of um, communities have that kind of story. There's a great big tall building in Enid um, called the Youngblood Hotel. Truly not operating at its full potential, what a great project. Down in Ardmore, we have a Beaux-Arts styled high school, their, their original high school that dates back to the early 1900s. And just a fabulous, solid, solid brick and stone building just waiting for redevelopment. It's often seen as a as a urban and a rural issue and how most of the benefit is in our, you know, multi Tulsa and Oklahoma City, but the benefit is actually scattered around the state.
Green is not new. It's something that we were aware of, or we've been aware of for many decades. And we've gotten a little more sophisticated with it. The idea is that an existing building, you've already spent a lot of energy just building it. There's been a lot of energy put into making the bricks. There's been a lot of energy put into transporting the materials that, um, that the building is made out of. So when we tear down that building, we've just ignored the value that those things have. I actually come to historic preservation from that kind of green perspective. Um, that's why it makes sense to me and if there's a passion that's the passion that I have is that we we don't have to throw away everything we actually can reuse it and that includes our buildings